In this chapter, we're going to talk about bringing in vertex color and vertex alpha into our shader so that we can use that additional information to apply some interesting effects. The first thing that I want to do is just give you a quick refresher on the interface in 3ds Max uh, for working with vertex colors. I have my teapot on my plane here, so let's just uh, let's just select the teapot. I'm going to come over here to the modifiers panel, and we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and grab the vertex paint modifier. Now on yours, it's off the screen, but it's down here at the bottom. It's called vertex paint, and there it is. So I added the modifier to my stack. Now I can come over here to this brush and just paint on my surface, and it's going to paint each vertex. I'll turn on my wireframe here. So each vertex is going to be receiving color, and it's the color that I've got selected right here. So right now I'm painting black vertex color. Now when my brush turns red, that means I've got the mouse button down, and I'm painting, But and, and you, see, you notice that there's nothing happening. And the reason that that is is because I don't have Max's viewport set up to display the vertex color information. So I'm going to right click and, p and choose properties. And now I want to pick vertex channel display. And then here in the drop down box, I want to select vertex color. Now, another important thing that I want to mention is on this modifier, it's important that you have the channel set to vertex color. So I have the modifier channel set to vertex color. I have the viewport or the object property set to display vertex channel, vertex color, and I hit OK. And now, now you can see that my teapot is solid white, but with black vertex color. And really, I can make these vertex colors whatever I want with the standard color picker dialog. Uh, so I can paint, the colors will blend together nicely. The strength is for the blur. If I want to blur my vertex colors and kind of blend them in with the vertices around them, I can hit this blur button. And because my strength is at 50, it just blurs it a little bit. This is interesting. If I keep pushing this, the vertex color kind of spreads itself out around the edges and, and gets nice and blurry instead of having sharp edges. So that's a nice feature. Uh, so why don't we paint a little bit of green? And I'm just making this ugly, I'm not really making any nice art, uh, but just to kind of get the point across. So you can paint vertex colors like this. And now the other thing that you can do is paint vertex alpha. So I'm going to come over here and add another vertex paint modifier. So now I have two. And for this vertex paint modifier, I'm going to set, I'm going to set it to vertex alpha, which will allow me to paint into the alpha channel. Now my alpha channel is all white right now, so I'm going to set this to black. And now I can actually paint my vertex alpha. So there's two different things I'm painting. I'm painting vertex alpha, and then in this other uh, vertex paint modifier, I'm painting vertex color. So vertex alpha, vertex color. All right, so that's how you handle the data inside 3ds Max. Well, that's all well and good, but how do we actually get this information into the shader? Right now, I don't have a shader applied. Here's my material panel. I've got this material applied. It's just a standard material, and we can choose to display vertex color or vertex alpha. Like if I choose uh, properties again, I can set this to show vertex color or vertex alpha. But that's just with the standard material. I'm not actually using a shader yet, like I said. So let's go ahead and grab these two models. I'm going to come over here to my start material. And I've loaded up the chapter 7 start shader in here. And I'm going to assign that to my plane and my teapot. All right, so now this is our pretty typical shader. We've just got specularity and normal mapping and and uh, everything that we basically have to begin with. But you'll notice that it's not displaying the vertex colors that we painted. And that's because we haven't yet brought them into the shader. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do that. 
I'm going to slide max over here. And just line it up nice. And here I'm going to turn off the, the modifier panel so we can have the full viewport. And we'll come over here to our Chapter 7 start. Now, what Vertex Color and Vertex Alpha is, is it's extra data. And in Max, it's stored in a mapping channel. So in Max, mapping channel 1 is the UV coordinates that are applied to the teapot. And we're already bringing those in. If we come in down here to our input struct, input from the application, we're bringing in the position of the vertices, the texture coordinates, the normal, binormal, and tangent. So our texture coordinates are in map channel 1. But what we really need to do is bring in the data from map channels 0 and negative 2. Now those aren't typically map channels that you use inside 3ds Max. Uh, those are the map channels that store uh, the vertex color and the vertex alpha. So let me show you how this is done. I'm going to come down here in the shader to just above our, our samplers section right here. And this is how you bring in map channel data from 3ds Max. I'm going to make a new int, and an int is a data type like a float, but it's for integer. And this is going to be int text chord 1. And what text chord 1 is, well, let's come down here really quick and I'll show you. So in our uh, input from application, what I'm going to do is add two more pieces of data here. This is going to be our vert color. And we're going to bind that to text chord 1. This is our incoming vertex data. And the text chord 1 register is now bound to this variable called vert color. And we're going to make a new one. This is just a float. And we're going to call this one vert alpha. And we're going to bind it to text chord 2. All right, so now I've got to fill text chord 1 and text chord 2 with the vertex color and the vertex alpha. So like I was doing, I'll come back up here and I'm going to say int text chord 1. And I'm going to associate that with text chord. Now I'm going to tell 3ds Max what data to put into this integer. So it's text chord equals 0. And whoops, that's int. And another int map channel equals 1. Now what we're doing here. And I'm sorry, I made a typo here. This is actually text chord 0. What we've done here is we've placed, uh, and I also need to end this with a semicolon, and do string UI type equals none, because we don't want this value to show up in the UI. And so what this does is it takes the texture coordinates from map channel 1 and it puts them into our incoming text chord 0. So we've got our texture coordinates from map channel 1 coming into text chord 0. Right? Now we want to copy this guy. And I'm going to put a closing semicolon there. We're going to copy this. So this brings in our texture coordinates. We're going to make a new one. This one's going to be for text chord 1. So I'll type text chord 1. And we want this one to bring in map channel 0. And I'll make a comment here. Map channel 0 is our vertex color. And again, we're going to copy this. 
and come down here and paste it again. This is going to be text chord 2. And our text chord 2 is bringing in map channel negative 2. And map channel negative 2 is our vertex alpha. All right, so we're all done. We've brought in our UV coordinates in text chord 0, our vertex color in text chord 1, and our vertex alpha in text chord 2. Now we have our input elements in our incoming struct, our texture coordinates in text chord, text chord 0, our vertex color in text chord 1, and our vertex alpha in text chord 2. Now let me just say something really fast here about differences in shaders that are meant specifically for 3ds Max versus shaders in general. If I were writing a shader for a game or some other engine or program, I would probably just say float for color and I would bind this to color. And then I would teach my my software to fill in color with the float 3 vert color and the float alpha just as a full float 4 and put it into the color register, the incoming color register. That would make more sense. But in the case of 3ds Max, they want to bring things in separately and put them in text chord registers. I'm really not sure why they set things up this way, but if you're writing your shader for another game engine or something like that, you'll probably want to bring it in this way uh, instead of this way. This these elements here, and also this code that I wrote up here to assign map channels to specific text chord registers, this is 3ds Max specific code. So I'm going to get rid of this guy really quick. All right, so I've got my data coming in, and now I need to come down here to my vertex shader and actually use my data. Now what I really want to do is just bring my color into my vertex shader and then pass it out to be used in the pixel shader. And in order to do that, I need to come here to my output struct, and I'm going to create a new element to pass out of my vertex shader, and I'm going to call this just float for color, and I'm going to put this in text chord register 6. And now what I need to do in my vertex shader is just say out.color, equals float4. We'll build a new float4, and we're going to fill this in with in. Let's come up here and look at what we called this again. in.vertColor for the first three components of our float4. And in dot, I'm going to come back up here and see what we called this, in.vertAlpha for the alpha component of our float 4. So basically, we've brought the vert color and the vert alpha in as separate components, and now we're passing them out as just one single float 4 value. See how we did that? We combined this float 3 and this float to make one float 4. Then we pass it out as this color value. Now what we can do is come down here to our our pixel shader and really we, now we have, so let's see, we have in.textCord, and we have several other things br being brought in. We have in.worldNormal, in.worldBinormal, but now we have in.color, and we can use this data for whatever we want. That's what's kind of neat about it. It's really flexible. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just, just going to use this vertex color as if it were diffuse color. And so I'm going to come over here to where I define diffuse, and I'm going to multiply my diffuse by in.color. Now remember that in.color is a float 4, and it also has my vertex alpha associated with it, and we want to handle the alpha a little bit different. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to create a new float 4 called outColor. And this is going to be, I'm going to take all of this here 
and put it here instead. So now out color is equal to what I used to be returning previously. And what that allows me to do is now I can say out color dot a or alpha channel. So now I can specify the alpha channel specifically. Out color dot a equals in color dot a. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the incoming alpha channel as the outgoing alpha channel. And what that's going to do is anything in this alpha channel is used for transparency in my shader. So now that alpha value determines what's transparent and what's opaque. Now there is one more thing I need to do in the shader, and that's to come down here to where it says alpha blend enable equals false. And I need to set this to true so that I'm actually getting alpha blending. All right, now let's hit save on our shader and come over to, whoops, that's not quite right. We want to say return out color. All right, save it again. Come back over here to max. And hopefully, hey, look at that. So now I've got an object. Let's just expand max out here once again and bring up our modifier panel. So now when I paint vertex alpha in this modifier, I'm actually painting the transparency of the object. If I come over here to the handle, maybe turn the handle down this way and paint my alpha. Now I'm making my handle disappear. See that? Because I'm painting the transparency of it because my vertex alpha is defined in my shader as transparency. Well, let's come down here to the other vertex paint modifier. This one's set to vertex color. And I can use the vertex colors. Maybe go with something kind of a turquoise color and paint down here toward the bottom. Now one thing that you'll notice is because I'm using my vertex color for diffuse, it doesn't show up in the dark areas. Like if I were to paint over here, you wouldn't see that much because this area is completely dark. I can also use my vertex color in another way. I can make it, uh, make it an ambient value. So uh, let's come back to our shader and switch it really quick. Whoops. Let's switch our shader to use the vertex color for ambient instead of diffuse. So here where it says times in dot color, well, let's see what happens if I set it to plus in dot color. We'll save that, come back over here to max, and whoa, it gets totally blown out. Now let me explain what happened there. By default, vertex colors are straight white. And so what I want to do, if I want to use my vertex color in this method, the first thing that I want to do is fill the whole model, and I can use this paint bucket here to fill everything with black, right? And then now I can paint something else. Like let's paint some red. And what you'll see is that it's, instead of darkening the model, it's actually brightening it up. So if I come over here to where it's dark, now it brightens it up. That's probably not how you'd want to use vertex color, but it's an option. And one of the neat things about this data is that I can use this for whatever I want, just however I happen to plug it into my shader. One interesting way of using uh, vertex color or vertex alpha is if you have two different texture samplers, two different diffuse textures, you can paint your vertex color to determine where one of the textures is going to show up versus the other texture. Or, you know, how high your bump map is going to be. Or all kinds of other uses. But what I wanted to show you in this chapter is basically how to bring in this data by mapping map channel coordinates to texture coordinate registers. 
here. And then changing your input struct to bring in the data. And then adding the elements in the vertex shader to combine the data and pass it out to the pixel shader. And then inside the pixel shader to be able to use the incoming vertex, uh, the incoming vertex color, however you'd like to use it. And so that's a pretty quick overview of how to use vertex color and alpha inside your shader. You could probably come up some, come up with some really interesting uses uh, for this data. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about vertex animation, and I'm going to go over some of the methods of moving vertices around inside your shader.